morning. I am in the Baal Valley. In fact, I'm actually parked at Withypore, a small village here in Somerset on the Exmoor National Park. The walk today is going to take us up Withypore Hill and then we'll drop down to the Baal River, which will follow all the way to the famous Tar Steps, a medieval clapper bridge that is probably one of the most visited areas in the whole of the National Park. So we'll spend a little bit of time there, look at some of the legends and myths surrounding the area, and then we'll work our way back up the river until we get back to Withypore. So today's not supposed to be a challenging day, but just hopefully a really picturesque one. It is very blustery outside. It feels more autumnal than sort of summery, but we'll see how we get on. Hopefully once we're up on the hill, we'll be back down in the valley anyway, so we'll be sheltered and life is good. Now there is a tea shop just down the road, so I've got my eye on that. Hopefully they'll still be open by the time we get back, but we'll see how we go. First things first, let's get our boots on, get our pack packed and get ready to go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I parked at a small car park on the banks of the River Bar, near the red sandstone bridge built in the 19th century. It's now a Grade 2 listed building and is visited by sightseers from all around. The area around Withypore has been inhabited since at least the Bronze Age and is recorded in the Doomsday Book as having been tended to by three foresters called Dodo, Alma and Godric. It remains a really peaceful place with a flourishing tea room, a local store and a scattering of houses. All right, let the walk begin. So Withypool is behind me, as is the car park. We'll get to check out that place properly on the way back when we come back through. But now what I'm going to do is I'm working up to the top of Withypool Hill, which is 398 meters above sea level or something. It's very simple. Basically, follow this road until I turn off and just climb to the top. <laughs> so and then from there, I'll come back down either the same way or a slightly different route, and we'll make our way down to the river. It may look like I'm... <laughs> in my winter garb and you're not wrong i'm just feeling the cold today it's about seven degrees so it's not not too cold by my standards really but uh i'm just feeling it and i'm glad i've got a bit of a hill to warm me up and i've also got my active os map today so uh, this is laminated so that if it rains it's just a bit more protective you can kind of draw on it and stuff and i'm always getting told off for, for ruining our map so i've got my own one here just a bit bulky that's all but I'll crush it down and make it feel loved <laughs> we'll see how we go anyway <laughs> it's trying really hard to rain and at the same time we're just gradually climbing up this hill heart rate's coming up and I'm about to get run over by a tractor <laughs> Here we are then, this is the junction where we're going to turn up to the top of Withypool Hill. We have this other road here on the, the right, that was the left, which also marks the point. No motor vehicles. All right, I'll have to control my pace then. <laughs> no steaming up here today. <laughs> on we go. As I made the gentle ascent, the views behind me stretched out as far as the eye could see across the much loved Exmoor landscape. Waterproof cover is on just as the rain starts coming in. You can see it. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> it's a bit wet over there. The rain was actually quite refreshing and I felt transported back to a time when the area was wilder and less eminent. There we go then. The top of Withypool Hill. 398 meters above sea level and it's a bit rainy and windy <laughs> but this is Exmoor and the views are still pretty incredible <laughs> So I've just come down on the floor here. I know it's a bit windy and rainy, but I basically, uh, I saw on the map that it says stone circles. So I'd really like to just try and navigate to see if we could find them simply using a compass bearing and by pacing. So counting out the number of steps that we're walking through when we know the set distance. So I've just got my compass and my map here. The first thing I'm gonna do is orientate my map. So it's facing north. So north is that way. That lines up with the red needle on the compass. And then I'm gonna take my compass here and I've got the direction of travel arrow, which is the big arrow on it. And I'm gonna place that from where I am to the stone circle. So I can see the line of travel. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bezel bit here and I'm gonna line up the, the lines there. 
with the the grid lines on the map making sure the arrow points north and then make sure that's as accurate as I can be I don't want to be off by any degree there we go and then I've got my compass so I'm now just going to put Fred to bed by moving it around until the red needle sits in the arrow in the circle bit I can't remember what that's called right now the housing bit and then that basically tells me now the direction of travel arrow is pointing in the direction that I need to go in order to get to the stone circle so the final thing to do then is to use the the measure the rulers on the edge of the compass and I'm going to like line up again the edge of the compass to measure out the exact distance making sure I've got the right scale so the 1 to 25 meter and measure the distance from here the top of Withypool Hill to the stone circles which is pretty much exactly 250 meters so my pacing for 100 meters is 67 steps so if I do 67 times 2 and then half that 33 and a bit I'll basically do the 100 meters 200 meters and then I'll do the 50 individually and I could use pacing beads if I want to but that's enough just to use my fingers so I've got my direction of travel I know how far I need to go let's see if we can make it work shall we <laughs> let's go two three four <laughs> five six sixty seven sixty eight 69 oh I lost count there we go that's over 100 meters I got distracted by the view so we're over 100 meters let's go again three four because I went over five six seven you can see I'm following this path here nine ten I'm kind of just utilize, utilizing it in the landscape 13 14 this is really hard 15 16 The sun has come out, the skylarks are singing, and we have arrived at Withypool Stone Circle. It was a little bit closer than I calculated, actually, so I'm going to go back and have a look at that and just see if I can see the error there. Maybe my compass slipped and my measurement was just off, but it was about 200 metres, so I was about 50 over. If I kept going, I would have shot on past it. But thankfully, there is this ginormous gorse henge actually marking the location of the Stone Circle, and this is a conservation pro project. Uh, basically, the Stone Circle just kind of is a prominent feature in the landscape right on a footpath and this is open access land so we've got horse riders cyclists walkers all going through and they're just trying to protect it by having this gorse henge and as you can see it's just about as impenetrable out as barbed wire so i do not nominate myself to go through that but uh the stonehenge the henge is actually four thousand years old and uh we're not actually entirely sure quite why it was built it's one of two scheduled stone circles scheduled ancient monuments stone circles on Exmoor National Park and it's possible it was something to do with or in relationship with the movement of the sun and the moon or sort of other ritual belief practices uh, the only other thing is it's a very prominent location I mean the views stretch as far as the eye can see all around of Exmoor so it's not a bad spot I mean if anything maybe it was just marking a nice picnic spot <laughs> who knows <laughs> crouched down on the ground here and I've just caught sight of one of my favorite plants at this time of year this is the common bilberry as we can see the berries are red at the moment but they very much are berries in fact they're flowers look at that gorgeous wow but we expect in a few months maybe July August we'll have some bilberries to pick happy days <laughs> So I basically decided to just walk south until I hit this bridleway, which you can see I'm on now. Very big and obvious scar in the landscape. Much more prominent now that we've got all the kind of spring and summer plants coming out. You can imagine this would be quite wet in the winter. I'm just following this all the way back to the road that I walked on earlier. And then from there, I'm going to take the X Valley Way all the way down to Tar Steps. It's going to be very exciting. I had a quick change of hats and gloves and I'm now making progress down the road until we get to Westwater Farm. The road was easy to follow and I made good time 
passing the first bride away that headed directly to Tar Steps. I wanted to take the second one though, that kept me higher for a little bit longer. It's so lovely to have all the bluebells just coating the banks beside the road here. I've just got to stop and admire them and ah, take in that fragrance. Here is Westwater Farm. Tar steps, one and three quarters of a mile. This way. I often feel a sense of worry when it comes to navigating through farmland, as the paths and signs aren't always looked after by the farmers. Too often I found myself lost in a maze of fields and boundaries. This time was different though, with well-marked clear paths with stunning views all the way. How spectacular is this backdrop? This is what I've been walking alongside the whole way and it's just absolutely stunning. And I know it is just mixed farmland but you can see the open access common land up on the top there. <laughs> and we've got all the little lambs just being super cute. There's nothing else to add to that, they're just cute. <laughs> Um, and we're just walking also parallel with the valley that we'll be walking back along with the river and at the moment I'm just heading just on until I get to a place called Parsonage Farm and then from there we'll turn down until we hit Tar Steps. Blue marker telling we're still on the right way. Happy days. There's the roof of the farm. So I'm going to be a bit naughty and I'm just going to cut across here, try not to disrupt the sheep too much. But you can see our path actually goes on this side of the field boundary and we head up here before dropping back down. So I'm going to just take a little bit of a shortcut. So important to take time to just stop and listen and there is not a man-made sound to be heard. It's just the birds and the sheep and the wind in the trees. Surely this is a glimpse of heaven. Just taking a sharp right and we're now entering the woods, beginning our final descent down to Tar Steps. See the bluebells just carpeting the floor of the woodland. That is spectacular. You can just hear the sound of the river now. And I have not been able to stop smiling in anticipation. I really don't know what to expect because I've never been here before. <laughs> Have fun, <laughs> take care. We let the horses go and here we are then. This is Tar Steps, the medieval clapper bridge. It actually derives its name from the medieval Latin clapperius, meaning pile of stones. Now this particular pile of stones is 50 meters in length and made up of 17 unmolted stones, all skillfully balanced together so that we can cross the river Baal. Now local legend actually says that the devil built the bridge so that he could sunbathe. As you can see, it is quite a sunspot, really nice, nice area to chill out and catch the rays. But uh, he did declare that anyone that tried to cross the bridge would be killed. So the locals weren't very happy about this and therefore they sent a cat. Now the cat was vaporized into a puff of smoke. So the next thing the locals threw at him was a parson. Now the parson challenged the devil to a swearing match and they swore and swore and swore until finally the devil gave way and we can still cross the river bar today. That being said though, on the sunniest of days, the devil still likes to use it to sunbathe. So whether you want to or not, you shall not pass. <laughs> Now that is Tar Steps. We've got the car park here, 
the bridge is back behind me. The river goes that way, which is the way I'm supposed to be going. But I'm just venturing up here because I'm interested to have a look at the restaurant cafe place just so you guys can see and maybe so I can see as well. Tar Steps Inn is a popular stop off for walkers and day trippers alike. They are passionate about food, people and the surrounding Exmoor countryside. And they also do a pretty good cup of coffee as well. That's good. Ah, that was a much needed cup of coffee. I only stopped for 10 minutes, but sometimes it's nice to do that kind of thing. We've left our steps behind, the river is beside, and we are walking now four miles all the way to Withypool. Now I have to admit, this is the stretch I've been looking forward to the most, just because the sky is blue, the birds are singing, the bluebells are out, we've got the sound of the river, and I'm excited to see what wildlife we'll be able to see as well. So I'm just hoping this stretch is gonna be a nice little bit of bliss all the way back to Withypool and the car. Now this may look like a bridge, but in fact it's designed to catch fallen trees. Now in storm conditions where their roots are ripped out and they find themselves in the water, this very strong wire, as we can see, very thick, very strong wire, is supposed to catch the trees and stop them going further downstream or down river and causing destruction. And this is a good opportunity really for me to talk about the Tar Steps and December 2012, because all over the country here in the UK, we had flooding, we had storms. It was really quite horrendous, especially the Somerset levels was hit really badly. Hundreds and hundreds of farms just went under and they lost their, their livestock. But uh, the Clapper Bridge was actually destroyed or mostly destroyed in December 2012. So the, the National Park repaired it. And then in November 2016, again, it was damaged by storm conditions. So it's really not an invisible structure. <laughs> despite having survived since the medieval period. And this is just one method that we've got today in our present time to try and protect the history that we have all around us. He's been having fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so great how you stumble upon the strangest things when you're out and about like this. One of my favourite walks on Dartmoor takes us past Castle Drogo and I've actually filmed that walk so you can check that one out. And basically what I found was a money tree. Lots of people had hammered money onto the bark and the outside of this tree and when they did so they made wishes. And this here is what I'm calling a money stump. And maybe, just maybe, this is what the inside of a money tree looks like. <laughs> Now uh, we've seen a money stump, let me show you a proper money tree. We've got one coming up and I think it's the most impressive one I've seen ever before. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this whole entire tree is covered in money all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. And then that stick is covered in money and this is covered in money. Oh my word. <laughs> that is impressive. Look at it. <laughs> Gosh. We can see how underfoot we've got this kind of cobble stuff, the big rocks. And basically what this is designed to do is to help prevent erosion. As the money tree has quite obviously pointed out, this path is very, very popular. And the idea with having the rocks is it's just helping to preserve it for that little bit longer. It was just magical walking alongside the river and I felt comforted by its unwavering steady pace opting to reflect this in my own attitude towards the day. I'm finding it really hard to make progress actually. I'm just loving taking my time and breathing and listening and smelling the things that there are to smell with the flowers. And <laughs> this has to be one of the most beautiful places I've walked in a good long while. And I've been to a fair few places. I'm just loving every minute of this.
The trail wound its way through the woodland, occasionally opening out into scrubland or grassy fields. Wow, look how beautiful this is. How clear the water is. Oh my word. Oh look, little fishes. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. <laughs> Free shower. There we go. There we go. Well, hey. We're passing through this ancient woodland and it is so lovely. There's the bluebells and the birds and the path's quite undulating and it almost feels like you're on the shore of a lake in, in Scotland or Cumbria. It's just otherworldly. I'm absolutely loving it. To the untrained eye, perhaps the path could have seemed a little bit boring, but to me, it was as good as you could get. There were gnarled roots and little bridges, bluebells, vibrant green leaves, bird songs, and so much more. My heart was receiving such a flow of goodness from the landscape around me, and it was incredibly uplifting. I don't think I can resist it any longer. I might just have to go in for a quick paddle, boots and socks off. There's only a couple of miles left to Withypool, and I don't know, I just don't want to rush today. So, we're going in. <laughs> I'm quite surprised I haven't seen much in the way of river wildlife. There are a few little minnow things actually under the surface, but I haven't seen any herons. I have seen a couple of dippers though, but given the fact that it's as peaceful as it is, I am quite surprised at the scarcity. I haven't really had the opportunity to mention it up until this point, but most of today I have been walking on the Two Moors Way, which is a long distance trail that goes through Dartmoor and through Exmoor. It's 117 miles and it's actually signed using this M Moors Way and pretty much everywhere I've been walking I've seen this sign which is quite exciting because actually I'm going to be walking the route later this year possibly in July and I'm going to do it in two stages so one stage will be or four days will be in one week and then the second week I'll do the other four days so it should take me hopefully eight days to complete but we'll see how we go on that's not till then I'm here in the now <laughs> All along the walk today there's been wildflowers of every type and we've got another one here and every single one that I see I can't help but smile and it brings to mind that quote where if you just like something you pick it but if you love it you leave it you let it grow and you let it flourish. We got some stepping stones so if I decided to go across those, it would take me to Withypool. We've got some stepping stones. So if I decided to cross, I'd end up at Withypool Common and Withypool Hill where we started off. And I'm going to carry on along the bank of the river. But they look lovely. I'm not sure they're quite doing what they're supposed to do though. <laughs> And there is Withypool. We've got Withypool Hill behind it as well. Just kind of framing the whole image as a classic Exmoor picture there. It's so beautiful. And we're just on the path, still ascending very steadily. And I think we emerge onto a track that'll take us down into the village. Withypool, this way. Oh gosh, look at all these bluebells. Wow.
here we are then, just on the outskirts of Withypool, and I've really just been enjoying using this last stretch down the road, reflecting on what a lovely, lovely afternoon it's been. I didn't get here until half past 12, and what time are we on? It's quarter past seven, seven? Five, <laughs> quarter past five now. So, you know, I've really taken my time today. I think we only walked about eight or nine miles, but we've had exposed moorlands, we've had archeological stone circles, we've had really tranquil forests and open farmland and of course the river the river has been a personal highlight for me just being able to have my pad on my feet and <laughs> skim some stones it's just really nice to take the time and do that and i have to say this is one of my favorite walks on exmoor and i'm saying that having never having never done it before but i've walked all over this national park and i just really enjoy sometimes stripping walks back to something that's navigationally quite easy but it's just full of so many special things to see. So I'm just gonna amble back to my car now. Just enjoy the peace of the village. Oh, she says, set the dogs off. <laughs> but uh, guys, until next time, make sure you're enjoying your ventures and stay wild. <laughs> back in the village, I passed the famed Royal Oak Inn, which makes a great place to end the walk with a drink and perhaps some food. I also passed the St. Andrew's Church, built in the late medieval period that's now a grade two listed building. Crossing the river that I'd grown to love throughout the day, I was now back at the car and ready to begin my journey home.